In this video, I'm gonna teach you how to film, edit, and upload to YouTube with just your smartphone. Let's do it. Hey everybody, it's Frozen, and thanks for joining me. Today I wanna to do something a little different. I normally don't do this type of video, but I've had a ton of requests for it on the channel, so I figure I'd throw it out there for anyone that's interested. So, for those that are new, that don't know, this channel is all about backpacking, hiking, and backpacking gear. I just finished a through hike, a 2,192 mile through hike of the Appalachian Trail, and I filmed my entire adventure, edited and uploaded right from my smartphone. Now, this is normally unconventional from what I usually do. I usually have a separate camera and I edit when I get home, but I think for most new vloggers, they're gonna start with the cell phone and work their way up from there. So that's what this video is gonna be about. So today I'm gonna get into filming, some tips, some things to stay away from. We're gonna take a look at the footage that I shot today, put it into an app called KindMaster for editing, and then upload it to YouTube. So let's get started. I'm gonna focus my footage around hiking, but I think this could apply to everyone. So if you're not really a hiking channel and you're just looking on some beginner tips on how to vlog, stay tuned, you still might find a use for this video. So what we're gonna to do today is I am going to walk down to that structure back there. That is my barn slash shed. It's an old structure. There used to be horses in it and everything. We're gonna walk 200 feet down there. We're gonna walk 200 feet back up here. And then we're gonna take a look at the footage and throw it into KindMaster for editing. And I'm gonna get not too technical, but enough to get you started. A quick disclaimer before we get started, I am not the best vlogger out there. I feel like I'm just good enough to be a little bit dangerous. So. Let's get into it. The first instinct that someone's gonna do if they're using their smartphone is to film with the front facing camera. I tend to shy away from this for two reasons. Normally, the rear facing camera is gonna be better quality, better resolution, better data throughput, and also has a better stabilizer than your front camera. So I highly recommend that you kinda of get your muscle memory. If you're gonna hold your camera out like this and film that way, definitely do that. Or, you know, if you have a case that's reflective on the back, what I do is I kind of center my face in the shot with the case, and so I know 100% that the camera is actually picking me up. Uh, also, what I recommend is a little tripod. Now, this is an UltraPod. You can get these for pretty cheap on Amazon. I'll give you the links to everything that I use in the description box below, so be sure to check that out. And also, I have this little Manfrotto smartphone mount so it kind of keeps the phone in place and I will be using this in this video so let's walk down to that structure like I said and then back get the footage and throw it all together okay switching over to the pixel 3 footage now what you want to do is you want to keep your outstretched arm smooth and you want to hold it as far to the right or away from the rear lens as you can now, what you also wanna do is have a light grip on your camera, but firm enough that you don't drop it, but you wanna kinda of relax your arm. Try not to keep it too stiff or else your footage is gonna be really bumpy and bouncy, even with the rear stabilization. You also want to switch your camera views. So we're gonna turn this camera off and we're gonna switch camera views to the front. So you notice now the shot is changed. We just came about ah, 50 feet or so down to this little area and what we're gonna do is we're gonna continue walking but I'm gonna switch up my shot. So I'm gonna film this way, okay? So we're pointing the camera in that direction. Down that direction is the barn that we're heading to. And I really recommend you try to mix up your shots and so it's not just one long, continuous, boring shot of you talking or of a certain thing. You also don't wanna hold your camera like this and just keep talking because it will get very boring. You'll also have people telling you, hey, stop filming too much of your face, or you're not filming enough of the trail, or hey, you're filming too much of the trail, we wanna see your face. So you have to kind of uh, mix it up a little bit as far as what you're exactly doing. So now I'm gonna hit the record button. What I do for the record button is I don't use the on-screen record button, I actually use the volume controls, and this works on Android and iPhone from what I'm being told. So we're gonna continue walking this way. I'm gonna adjust the camera so you can see exactly what I'm doing again. Starting to head down to the barn here. It's a really beautiful day. Notice that I'm filming something different right now. I'm filming the sky, I'm not walking. You can walk if you want, but I'm just getting a little B-roll of the sky.
pretty blue skies, the sun's out about 70 degrees, and it feels fantastic out here. Okay, so I basically see something pretty or something that I want to show off on the trail, and I will focus in on it. Now you can do this uh, while you're talking, or you can put music to it, or whatever you want to do. For this time around, we're going to just put it over top of the shot that we're talking in. You'll see all this stuff if you're confused whenever we get into the editing process. So I'm just going to go up to this tree and let the camera focus on the flower. You can pretty much do that just by touching the subject that you want to do. That'll kind of blur the background on most phones because of the aperture. And I'm just going to get a nice little shot of this flower right here. All right, so I just got that shot of the flower, and now we're going to continue walking down to the bar. Now, this time we're actually going to use the UltraPod and set that up pretty much right down here. It's a little short. Obviously, it's low to the ground. If you want to bring a bigger tripod, you can. But for me, this backpacking doesn't take up a lot of room, and it's really light, so that's why I use it. Anyway, let me just make sure you can see the setup of the shot. All right, I'm hitting the record button and I'm gonna walk past the camera maybe for three seconds or so and then I'm gonna keep going. All right, I stopped that shot. So what I wanna do now is I wanna walk pretty much to the point where I was at the end of the shot before I started walking back, and that'll give us a nice walking away effect. For the next shot that I want to set up, I want to point the rear facing camera right at my face again so we can you know, get a view of my face. And then right as I'm about ready to hit the barn with my hand, we're just going to touch it and kind of go. I'm going to switch the camera around, and so we're going to film the barn door and my hand touching it, and then we're going to come back. So let's do that. This has been an incredibly long journey of about three minutes down to the barn, and I'm really excited to finish up my hike. And I believe everyone. Now, I just stopped the camera here mid-sentence, and what I want to do with it is I want to continue the sentence with the other side of the camera facing the opposite way. That we have finished our journey. We've touched the barn. It feels good. It feels good to touch the barn and come a long way on this journey. Now what we're going to do is we're going to turn around and walk home. Okay, so for this shot, what I'm going to do is I'm going to combine several small clips of me walking back to the house, and then we're going to add music to it in the editing process. So here we go. I'm going to film my feet first walking back so we can get a shot of that. Okay, I'm switching shots again, and then we're gonna film a little bit of the face. Okay, stopping that clip. Now I'm gonna switch this camera around. This is actually really weird filming with two cameras, but yeah, we're gonna get it. Now in this one, we're actually gonna go forward in time and set up the tripod and then walk toward the tripod. So it's a little bit different than walking away from it because we want to come toward it. So I'm going to run down there, set up, hit record, and run back and then walk toward the camera. Okay, so again, I'd like to get some footage of something that's you know on the trail or something interesting. We already did the sky, we did the flowers in the tree. Now I wanna get this bush. So we're gonna do the same thing as we did over there. Get some B-roll is what I call it of this side right here.
All right, then maybe I'll throw in a forward facing shot again since we really haven't done that yet in this little sequence. So again, just gonna point it this way and walk toward the house. All right, that clip stopped, and then the final clip is just gonna be touching the door again, and then we'll thank everybody, and then we'll go from there. Now, one big thing, it's really important that you thank your audience for watching, because honestly, they have devoted their time to watch you and take the time to learn about your personality and just generally get to know you and what you're doing. That takes a lot to get them started. Now after a while they'll start to be more comfortable with you, but you really wanna to talk to your audience and let them know that you do appreciate them taking the time out of their busy day to actually watch you. So that's really important to me, so that's what I'll do right now. So everybody, I know that this was such an exciting video. It was super cool and interesting to see me walk 200 feet through my backyard, down to the barn, and then back again. We should definitely do it again sometime, so stay tuned. I appreciate you guys, and I hope to see you again. Thanks for watching. Okay, now, on every before and after shot, what I really highly recommend is give yourself two or three seconds after you start talking and before you end the video. So when you start filming, click it on, wait a couple seconds, then do your little clip. And then when you click it off, also give yourself a two or three second buffer. And that'll allow your editing process to go much smoother because sometimes you wanna add transitions or just stuff over top of that little extra area. And if you need some extra time for music, that also helps with that. So like I said, give yourself a before and after buffer on every single clip that you do. Try to remember it. It's really hard when you start, but you'll definitely get the hang of it. All right, so now we're gonna take the footage and we're gonna take a look at an application called KineMaster, which is what we're gonna use for editing. Okay, so this is the KineMaster application, and this is what we were gonna do our editing on. Now, before we get started, a couple things. KineMaster is a fully featured free application that you can do all your editing on. However, if you stay with the free version, you're gonna have an ad in, on your timeline, you're gonna have a watermark on your final footage. I highly recommend you just get the paid version of this, which is around five bucks a month, just to get those removed. And that's what I did, however, I let my application subscription expire and you're gonna see those ads throughout the process because there's no need for me to do it. I actually am using Adobe Premiere now that I'm back home. So anyway, we're gonna create a new project by tapping in this button. Remember to keep track of where my thumbs are gonna be by the little dots on your screen. That's where my thumbs are touching. Okay, what we want here is a 16 by nine aspect ratio. This looks the best on YouTube. Our eyes are not vertical, so we don't want to use 9 by 16. And we're pretty past the square box thing, so we don't want a 1 to 1. So 16 by 9. This is the main editor screen. You can see that there's an ad here, and then the watermark's going to appear right up here in your footage. So before we even get into this, we want to go to the gear icon on the left side of the screen right here. And we want to make sure this audio fade in start of project slider is off. I don't know why it's on by default but it creates a lot of problems and I don't know why anybody would want this feature. So just make sure that's off and get back to your editing screen. Now here we're gonna have a couple things. We're gonna have our screen monitor in this location. So we're gonna be able to watch the footage from your timeline. The timeline is right here, which we're gonna do all of our editing from. We have a play button right here and we have uh, this red button right here, which allows us to capture footage directly right now and put it into the application. We're not going to use that ever, so don't really worry about that. What we are going to use is this media folder right here, which is going to allow us to import the footage that we just took in the previous segment of this video. So let's click that now. Now, the footage usually is in a, a folder called camera, at least for Android, and that's where I'm going to get my footage from. I don't know what it's going to look like on iPhone. It should be similar. I think, I'm not sure, I've never used an iPhone for editing, but 
for now, what we want to do is we want to import all of our footage into the project timeline down here. So what we're going to do is we're just going to do just that. We're going to tap each piece of footage one at a time and just get everything down on the timeline. Okay, and then we can click this check mark on the top right to clear everything out. All right, now we're going to use this button, by the way, fast forwards it to the front or the start to help you go faster. All right, so now what we want to do is we want to run through this footage. You can see the watermark up here. Like I said, get rid of that. I think it's five bucks a month, and at least that's what I was paying. All right, now you can see now that we've added stuff to the timeline, the project timeline, we have a couple more. We can overdub with a voice. Basically, we just click that and we can record right into the thing if we want to do something over top of the footage. We have a layer, which we're going to get into in a little bit here. And we also have audio, which we can add songs or music or whatever we want to into the project. So what we want to do is we want to pretty much play this footage and see what we want to cut or edit out. Okay, switching over to the Pixel 3 footage. Now what you want to do is you want to keep your outstretched arm smooth. And you want to hold it as far to the right or away from the rear lens as you can. Now, what you also want to do is have a light grip on your camera, but firm enough that you don't drop it. But you want to kind of relax your arm. Try not to keep it too stiff or else your footage is going to be really bumpy and bouncy, even with the rear stabilization. You also want to switch your camera views. So we're going to turn this camera off and we're going to switch camera views to the front. All right, so that is going to be my end of the clip. If I let that keep going, there's a whole bunch of extra stuff that I don't want to be in the final cut. So we're going to back that up, and you're going to notice once I click on the clip that we're actually on, we're going to switch camera views to the front. There are a whole bunch of other things come up. So this little scissor icon right up there, that's going to allow you to cut certain portions of the footage, and that's what we want to do. So we want to take it, and we want to trim to the right of the playhead. Now you can do split at the playhead, split and insert a freeze frame, trim to the left, trim to the right. So for this one we want to trim to the right and now you can see it's going to get rid up of all of that area that we don't want in the final clip if you can see that. So now what happens is our footage is just going to end after I say that last word. Okay and it's going to go to the next clip. So we're gonna do that on pretty much every clip. But for me, what I wanna also show you is the people that have water resistant phones. I forgot to talk about this in the beginning. I have a water resistant phone. With a water resistant phone, sometimes you're gonna notice that there is extremely low volume. You can tell by the volume meter right here. What you really wanna to strive to do is you wanna keep your volume right at this little zero mark right here. That's about um, negative six decibels. Like, That's really what you want to do or else it's going to be a, you're going to have a hard time hearing the final footage once it's on YouTube. So what you can do is you can actually tap the clip and you can use this volume control right here. So right here. And what that'll allow you to do, there's a there's an option called auto volume. Basically, it adds compression to your original clip and it will basically make it louder for you. Another thing I like to do, since I have two microphones on this phone, what I like to do is I like to bring the left volume and the right volume in the center. That way, the sound from both the left channel and the right channel, the you know left and right microphones, come out the center. And we're gonna play that back and see how that sounds. Okay, switching over to the So you can see now over here on the volume indicator that it is pretty good. It's not really low like it was before. You want to hold it as far to the And I think that's pretty good. We're at about minus 6. If you want to raise it up even more, what you can do is you can just raise the volume on that certain clip. And you can see that now we're really on that negative 6 or 0 decibels. So for the Simplicity of this video, I'm just going to leave that at 100, but you might want to play around with it. Keep everything the same. And what I want to do before I even edit any more is I want to turn the auto volume on on all the clips and keep it to the center channel. And yes, I did this on every single clip in my Appalachian Trail footage. So I'm just going to go down the list and just get everything. That way, when you're doing this, 
it, it will allow you to do it all at once in every clip instead of, you know, when you cut it, if you want to split the footage, you might have to do this for multiple clips because every time you cut it, it becomes a new clip. So you may as well do it just at the start of each one. <laughs> all right. Let's see, we're just doing the same thing over and over and over again. Now, like I said, I used Adobe Premiere at home and there's a way easier way to do this when I get back. But, you know, for Kind Master, this is kind of what you have to do. Volume is really important to do and keep track of because no one wants to hear a bad volume clip. Like it's, it's, it's the worst thing in the world. Some people can handle bad video clips, but if it's bad audio, they're going to click off your video. All right, so this is what we got so far. We'll start here because this is where we finished off editing. To the front. All right, Starting so to I'm going to let this clip roll, here. and really we're going to just day. cut it off right here because it's a beautiful day. What we want to do is we want to split at the playhead because I want to use this footage in something else where I actually look at the sky. So we're going to let this roll and split it again right here. So now we have three clips. We have this clip. Full day. We have this clip, which is a picture Notice of the sky. I'm filming something different right now. I'm filming the sky. But in this I'm one, I'm walking. talking to the camera, so we want to take this out want, eventually. But I'm just getting a little B-roll of the... And then we have this right here. Now, I'm going to take a little trim off that. It means we're going to split to the right. Now, you can also you can do this one, which I found the easiest, or you can actually drag these yellow handles. If you see that, you can just drag this handle a little bit. But I like to tap it right before I hear the you know part that I want to edit. So I like to do that better. Okay, and that's going to be right there. So I'm going to left it, and then it's going to look like that. Pretty blue. Actually, we're going to go back a little bit here, and again trim that out. Okay. We're going to trim this part out, trim to the right of the playhead, okay? We're just shortening the clips and making them usable. All right, we show a little flower here. We're going to let that roll. All right, I think that's enough of the flower. We're going to take the right out of there. We're going to continue walking. Now, on this clip, if you remember, this is the one I'm walking past the camera. So you want to get to the point where you're just entering the shot, right? So just entering the shot and you're going to clip it from there. Okay, so the shot looks like this now. Okay, now we want to clip this again when I start to turn around. So we're going to back that up a little bit. And I think right there is good. All right, trim to the right. All right. And then we're on our final clip down to the barn. This has been All right, you can see I kind of was scratching my face here. So we're going to edit that part out, trim to the left. So you can see what we're kind of doing. We're just getting usable footage into the timeline. Of about three minutes down to the barn, and I'm really excited to finish up my hike. Now on this clip is where I started saying part of a sentence and finished it up in the next clip. So watch how we're going to do this. I had a lot of questions about how I did that without them seeing you know, me flip the camera around or do any kind of stop points and everything like that. That's how I did it. And I believe everyone. So right after I say, and I believe everyone, I'll clip it to the right. That we have. And I'll take a little bit off there to make the sentence seamless. So this is what we have now. Finish up my hike. And I believe everyone that we have finished. So it kind of sounds, at least, but to the audience, it sounds like that sentence was continuous and that I didn't have any cut point there. It was just a camera trick. And I believe, everyone, that we have finished our journey. We've touched the barn. It feels good. It feels good to touch the barn and come a long way on this journey. Now what we're going to do is we're going to turn around and walk home. All right, right there, I'm going to trim that clip to the right because that's perfectly you know, fine as far as length on that one. Now these next set of clips are the ones that I wanted to add music to. Now what I did for music was I used a service called Epidemic Sounds. Basically it's a subscription service. As long as you're paying for the subscription, you can get a lot of songs and sound effects copyright free to use in your videos. 
I'm gonna film my. I'm gonna film my feet. Okay, so we want to start when I start first, to film my feet. Back so we can get a shot of that. All right. So we want to take out this and just put it to the feet. All right, back it up just a little bit to where I'm still in motion and trim to the right. All right, that's good for that clip. Trim to the right. All right, now this shot is the one we were walking towards, so we need to fast forward it until I start walking toward the camera. I think right about there. We're going to tap the clip, trim to the left. All right, and we don't have to watch it. We can actually fast forward it. So right as I pass out of the frame is when we're going to clip it. So right about there. And we're going to clip to the right. So now, this is the clip right here. All right, remember we're showing the bush now, which has a really annoying uh, pump. It's for the, uh, the septic system, actually. It's kind of gross, but there's a pump in there for aeration. So we really want to take that out. All right, we're just for now we're going to trim to the right and I'll come back to that shot. And then walking toward the house. Now, if you hear that you guys hear that little stop point when I hit the volume button to turn the camera off. What I would do is I would just stop it right before that sound. So right here, and I will trim that off. I trimmed every single clip off like that. So you can't hear that stop point. All right, again, right there to get that stop point out of there. All right. And again, stop point, and then it goes to me thanking everybody. Sorry, everybody. I know that this and we don't have to watch this. We can just... Thanks for watching. And then we're going to end it right after that bird cause. Okay. So this is basically our clip. So we're going to go back to the, the, the start because there's one part of the sky that I want to show you. So I filmed this as all one clip. So I filmed me walking toward the tree line. I filmed up at the sky, but I was talking. And then I filmed me continuing to walk to the bush, to the tree. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to delete this clip completely out of there. So on the left side of your screen right here, you can see that trash can. We're going to delete that. But we want to put that sky in the shot. So how do we do that without screwing up our original footage? We're going to take a look at the layer option right here. And we're going to overlay a media clip, which is going to be that shot of us walking down to the barn. And I believe that clip is right here. Now, you can see a couple things. The, the clip is overlaid, but we're not in the right position. So we want to clip it, we want to trim it at the sky. So let's trim it right here. And it works the same way as a normal clip. We're going to trim to the left. We're going to fast forward it just to show the sky off a little bit. And then we're going to trim to the right. Now you might be saying, well, dude, it's a box. That looks stupid. Well, that's why we drag this little arrow down here and just fill up the screen. Okay, right like that. So we're going to move this clip now. And how we move this clip, because we want to bring it way back here in between these two clips right here. Now we're going to move this clip by just holding our thumb on it and just dragging it down the timeline. You can just kind of leave it there. And we're going to drag it right here in between these two timelines. So now this is our clip. We'll still hear the audio of us walking. So we are actually going to take the audio out of this shot by clicking that clip and just dragging the volume down to zero percent now this Head is the clip to the barn here it's a really beautiful day pretty blue skies the sun's out about 70 degrees and it feels fantastic all right now i don't like the way that blue sky ended so we're going to trim a little bit of this a couple seconds and then we're going to move this clip down again by holding it all right so this is our clip there it's a really beautiful day 
pretty blue skies. The sun's out about 70 degrees, and it feels fantastic out here. Okay. So you can see how we kind of seamlessly added that clip here without really anyone noticing, and we have the main footage, you know, kind of still continuing. Now, I said that whenever we have the little sequence of me walking back to the house from the barn, we're going to add some audio. So we're going to do that, and to do that, we have the audio menu. Now, these are actually most of these songs are from Epidemic Sounds, which is a premium music service you can use. Basically, you just go to this website, download a whole bunch of songs, and as long as you're paying their subscription cost, which is, I believe, $15 a month, you can use whatever you want without them hitting you with a copyright claim. If you don't want to spend the $15 a month, you can actually uh, download a whole bunch of free songs from YouTube and use those as long as you download them into your computer and transfer them into the music folder. Or if you download it right from YouTube into your phone and transfer them into the music folder, they will appear in this song section right here in your audio browser. So for me, I have my Epidemic Sound subscription still on, so we will use that. I think we are going to go with Crazy For You. All right, and I like that song. I've used this a couple times. We're going to hit the plus arrow and bring it down to the timeline. All right, so now we have music in our timeline. All right, now you can see it's kind of loud just based on the, uh, the volume levels over here. So what we're going to do is what I like is a 20 to 30% uh, reduction. So just get the level down to like 20%. And that should be good there. Now what we're going to do is we're going to turn around. And now you can see... You can hear, I should say, that the the song isn't drowning out the audio of the normal clips. All right. Also, one thing I like to do is I like to fade the audio in from the previous clip. Now, the reason I like doing it from the previous clip is because it, it sounds and flows better if you start it before the next clip starts. If you want to kick it up to 100%, and I'll show you what I'm talking about here on this clip, then we can do that. So start it here, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna drag this all the way to zero. This is the volume envelope. Basically, you get there by clicking on the audio and clicking this thing right here, the volume envelope, all right? It's gonna be at 100%, you gotta lower it to, to zero. And let's move this clip over so it starts a little bit before. So now we can start raising the clip up right about here. So we're gonna go back into the volume envelope and add an endpoint right here and we're gonna just bring this back up to 100%. Now it's still gonna be the 20% volume that we had before but this is 100% of that 20% volume. I hope I'm explaining that right. So now we have a nice fade in Journey. of the music. And you can't even really tell that it's happening. And walk home. All right, I'll pay attention right here. All right, so you can see that song is past the intro and it's to the point where, it, you know, it's kind of going, it's doing its thing, but the song starts here. What I really like to do is line that up at the song start or the, the hit of the song or the beat or the main, whatever you want to call it. Move that over to that middle clip. So what we do is we just kind of hold, long click it with your thumb and just move it right there. So this tall line here representing the audio input is right in line with when the clip starts. So now we have this. And we can even do that again here. Okay, so if we just drag this over a little bit, it'll hit again on that next clip. Just a tad more. So everybody, I know that this was such an exciting video. Now because I'm talking here, what we want to do is we want to use that volume envelope again to kind of lower the volume down just a little bit. So we're going to put a point here to keep that raised 
And on the next clip, we're going to lower it to, I'll say, 50%. And you can see what's happening here. So the volume is coming in, lowering. I'm going to start talking here. And the clip is going to continue to play. Now, if you keep scrolling this, you can see that that clip is starting to slowly go up. What you do here is you just go to the end of your clip and bring that back down to 50%. I don't know why it does that. I wish it would just stay there. Um, but yeah. So anyway, what we're going to do now is since we don't need the rest of this song, we are actually going to cut it like we do a normal clip. And we do that by going into the trim and split. So again, we're just going to trim to the right of the playhead, maybe, maybe drag it out just a little bit. And at the end of this clip, what I'd like to do is I'd like to do a fade out. So here's how we are going to do that. We are going to add a, another clip after this. Using the media browser, we're just going to add a black background. That way we have this little transition thing right here. With transition things, you can see this between each and every single clip. So we have one here, here, etc. If you click these little clips between clips, we can actually just do a really easy transition. We'll do a classic transition, a crossfade. So now, instead of, just, instead of the clip just ending, and let me show you what this will look like with just ending. So instead of the clip just going out. See you again. Thanks for watching. And then that's it. What we can do, like I said, if we click a black background and just add that little transition, it'll look like this now. Guys, and I hope to see you again. Thanks for watching. It'll fade out. And we can even extend that audio and extend that black just background and now we can add text we could put you know thanks for watching or something like that if I could spell on this thing geez <laughs> it's weird typing in landscape mode and maybe put a little uh, you know exclamation mark at the at the end of that okay and we can make this big or change the font or you know whatever we want to do all right and that is our text layer. So we can put the text layer right here. And we can even put it and fade it in and out. So we'll just do a fade in and an out animation, fade out. So now the whole clip goes like this. Again, thanks for watching. All right, we're just going to drag that to the end. watching all right so thanks for watching now we want to boost that audio back up because it sounds a little silly the way it is all right so we'll take it well we already have a point here so we'll just take it right here and boost that back up to a hundred percent and that should be it guys and I hope to see you again thanks for watching And then finally, we can add one more and fade that final music out. And that should be the end of our clip. There you go. So now that we have our full okay, storyline and all of our so footage is do, perfect, we your... need to export it. Now, how do we export it? Well, you're going to use this little share icon right here. Okay. Now, for 1080p, you can do up to 4K on this. It's really fine. But for me, it was shot in 1080p. I want to keep it in 1080p. It's also shot at 30 frames per second or 29.97. 30, same thing in this app. Uh, now, here is where I suggest playing around with some settings. Now, for me, this bit right here. Okay, you can see that this file is going to use about 625 megabytes of data on your phone if you render it at 29.77 megabits per second. If we lower that to, let's say, 3, you can see we're only using 66 megs. So you have to keep in mind how much space this is going to be versus, you know, how much space you can save. Now, the lower the bit rate, the lower the quality, the higher the bit rate, the higher the quality, but more space. What I would suggest is I would keep it around 20 
megabits a second. You can even drop it maybe to 15. My entire AT through hike, I believe, was 20, except when I screwed up on a Mount Washington thing, it was 12 or something like that. But I really wish that everything would have been around 20 megabits. So, uh, like I said, you don't need to make it exact. 19.98 is fine, as close to 20 as you can get. And then what you're gonna do is you're just gonna simply hit export. We're just gonna skip this premium thing and we're gonna export this video. So the next thing we're gonna talk about is uploading to YouTube. But first, let's check out our footage to make sure that everything is correct. Okay, switching over to the Pixel 3 footage. Now what you wanna do is you wanna keep your outstretched arm smooth and you wanna hold it as far to the right or away from the rear lens as you can. Now, what you also wanna do is have a light grip on your camera but firm enough that you don't drop it, but you wanna kinda of relax your arm Try not to keep it too stiff or else your footage is going to be really bumpy and bouncy even with the rear stabilization. You also want to switch your camera views. So we're going to turn this camera off and we're going to switch camera views to the front. Starting to head down to the barn here. It's a really beautiful day. Pretty blue skies. The sun's out about 70 degrees and it feels fantastic out here. This has been an incredibly long journey of about three minutes down to the barn and I'm really excited to finish up my hike and I believe everyone that we have finished our journey. We've touched the barn. It feels good. It feels good to touch the barn and come a long way on this journey. Now what we're going to do is we're going to turn around and walk home. everybody I know that this was such an exciting video it was super cool and interesting to see me walk 200 feet to, through my backyard down to the barn and then back again we should definitely do it again sometime so stay tuned I appreciate you guys and I hope to see you again thanks for watching Now that we're sure that all the footage is correct and there's no weird glitches or anything in the video editing, we can finally upload to YouTube. Okay, so this is simple. Download the YouTube app and right up here, there is a little like camera icon and this is where you're gonna just upload your video. Now it should appear in your camera roll, at least I would hope so. If it's not in there, I am not even sure where to tell you to look. You might have to just check your phone's folders and everything and figure everything out. Uh, but pretty much we're just going to add a title. I'm just going to call this test so I know which one to delete and just test video. All right, done. Change this to private so no one can see the video. What I like to do is I still like to review it once it's on YouTube because sometimes it does create some glitches. So while that's uploading, I also recommend that you do get an app called YouTube Creator Studio, which you can do several other things with including answer any kind of comments you get on your channel and it really helps to see the comments just in one general area for all your videos that happen to go through each video and clicking on the comments but if we scroll down to videos in the YouTube Creator Studio we can see that we have this test being uploaded from there we can edit the details we can actually schedule the video from here I don't know why you can't schedule it while you're uploading, but we can schedule it for Wednesday at 
3 p.m. or something like that, or whatever you wanted to do, you can monetize it right here if you choose to or not, uh, if you have the monetization available, or you can actually delete the video from there. So that's what we're gonna do, we're gonna save it. Now, one more thing. If we want to create a thumbnail, I'm gonna show you how to get a picture from your actual video. Okay, this was something that I had to do while I was out on the trail because I really didn't wanna take a shot or a picture and then add it as the thumbnail. I wasn't sure how the day was gonna progress. So what you can do is instead of going into the edit menu right here, you can click this play button, which is gonna make it full screen and then you're able to actually take a screenshot using the volume down and power buttons on Android. I'm sure there's a comparable thing in iPhone as well. Look in the comments below for how to do that. And what I recommend for thumbnails is what I was using on the trail, Snapseed. It's a pretty easy thumbnail creator. You can kind of figure everything out, so I won't go into too much details. But from the screenshot, you will have to crop out the bottom and top of your phone, or else you're gonna see like what time it is, your battery percentage, and the buttons. Uh, but once you have that, you can really just, you know, add uh, text effects, you know, text title to, you know, whatever you want to do and, you know, just kind of make a little thumbnail for it. So if you want to put a one or something like this for episode one, you know, you can put it down here, you can shrink it, zoom it, whatever you want to do, and that'll be your little thumbnail. And that's how I did it. You know, maybe tune up the image a little bit, you know, add a little bit of saturation, whatever you wanted to do to clean up the image, but I'm not going to go too into it here. And then after you're done doing, you know, whatever kind of edits you want to your picture, you just download it, uh, save it. Go back into YouTube Creator Studio, choose that thumbnail that you just made, and there you go. That is your thumbnail. Save it, and then you can watch your video. So everybody, that's pretty much it. Now the only way you're gonna master the topics that I covered in this video is if you go practice for yourself. The more you do it, the better you're gonna be and the faster everything will become. So if you found any use in this video, give it a thumbs up, share, and consider subscribing to the channel. I'm always going on new adventures, posting hiking tips and backpacking gear reviews. I'm Frozen, and thanks for watching.